Let us look at the essential parts of the guitar. Starting from the head stock, we'll have the tuning packs, or otherwise known as machine heads, and these are used for tuning the strings of the guitar. Next, we have the nut, and the nut is used to align the strings towards the machine heads. Next, we have the frets, which are all over the fretboard, and the frets are important because this is where we will place our fingers as we Play our chords. So please take special attention to the word frets. Following that is the soundboard or the face of the guitar, which produces sound as we strum or pluck our strings. And of course, we have strings on the instrument, and there are six strings. The first string is the string closest to the ground, while the sixth string is the string closest to your face or your chin. Next is the saddle, a white piece, which is attached to the bridge and the saddle can be adjusted if you need a higher or lower action for your instrument. Finally, the bridge. And this bridge is where we have our strings attached and the bridge is anchored down to the face of the guitar. Let's look at how we tune our instrument. If you look at the score on your screen, this shows how the open strings of the guitar are. The first string is E, and it goes all the way to the sixth string, which is also a note E, but two octaves lower. The very first basic posture is the way we sit. For me, I'm using a guitar support. Some of you might use footstools. Either way, we'll have the guitar perched in a slightly diagonal manner, approximately 45 degrees, and your hands can be placed this way. The left hand is perched this way with the thumb at the back and your right hand should be resting comfortably and lightly around this place. One way to check a stable posture is to remove your left hand and see if your guitar stays still. If it starts to wobble and fall off, it means you have not got a nice support with your right hand. And when you sit this way, you find that the guitar is centralized to your body and this makes it easier for you to access higher registers on the instrument as well as moving your hand, the playing hand or the right hand in case you want to change the timbre of sound from a smoother sound to a more metallic sound. So always sit in the right posture and keep your back straight, never slouch. Looking at your screen, you will see a picture of the left hand's wrist. For the left hand's wrist, it should be bent very slightly so as to allow for the knuckles to be parallel to the string. Next, the string should always be pressed by the fingertips and this will help create a perpendicular angle between the fingers and the fretboard. Finally, your thumb should never protrude over the fretboard. Instead, it should lie at the back of the neck opposite the index and middle fingers. The left hand fingers are numbered as shown here. The index finger is 1, middle finger 2, ring finger 3 and the little finger 4. The thumb is not numbered as it is placed at the back of the neck supporting the other fingers. Let's have a closer look at our right hand. For most of us who are right handed players, this is where the sound of the guitar is created. So it's extremely important that you have an optimal posture which develops a stable tone and gives you flexibility in your fingers. Some points to note about the right hand. Firstly, if you look at the diagram, the wrist is bent slightly and it's arched over the strings. The knuckles are in line with the strings, although for some players we might have a more diagonal approach. But for both cases, we want the nails to cover at advantageous surface area of the strings. Next, there should be an approximate X shape created between the thumb and index finger. This keeps the thumb ahead of the fingers and helps you play free strokes quite fluently. 
Finally, your fingers should never be splayed or awkwardly spread apart. They should be kept close together. The common nomenclature for the right-hand fingers are derived from the initial letters of its Spanish words. So for the thumb, we call it pulgar, letter P. For the index finger, indice, letter I. The middle finger is called medio, letter M. And the ring finger is known as annular. Let's have a closer look at the apoyando stroke. If you look at my right hand, I'm playing the first string and coming to rest on the second string for either fingers. And if I play the second string, I will come to rest on the third string. And that is the basic premise for the apoyando or rest stroke. And this rest stroke is commonly used for playing melodies as well as scales. And this is considered the stronger of the two strokes, which we are going to learn for this program. The next stroke is called the tirando stroke, or the free stroke. And if you look at my right hand here, I'm making the gesture of a fist. And this is probably the best way to explain this stroke. By just creating the movement of a fist, you can play your strings. I plant. I push the strings a little bit and then I make a fist. And this is the best way to describe the tirando stroke. And always remember, never create a claw-like action like this because this creates a very nasty sound. Right? We definitely do not want that sound. So always play it in the form of a fist. And if you watch the movement of your fingers, for the tirando stroke, you must move from the knuckles. So the movement of your fingers will be such and not from the middle joint. So never play it this way, nor should you lift your strings up. Here's an example of using tirando strokes for chords. I'm playing block chords now and I'm playing arpeggios now. And if you watch the gesture of my fingers, it's moving this way and never with the claw. So if you have trouble with your tirando stroke, always go back to the aspect of making a fist. As we progress on with this video, we would like to introduce a method which we have designed especially for this program. And we have called it the A method. And if you look at what I'm doing now, and they all seem to sound the same. That's true because I'm playing the A note on all the six different strings. With the knowledge of the A notes, we will now look at four separate techniques which will help you with your playing. The first one is a very critical technique called the tremolo. And this is used by all guitar ensemble players. Next is subdivision. In this method, we will take a crotchet and divide it into two parts, three parts, and four parts. Articulation. We will investigate two aspects of articulation. Staccato, where we shorten a note, and accents, where we play a note slightly louder. We have a stronger attack. And finally, speed burst. As the name implies, this will help you to play notes faster and develop your breathing, an aspect which is critical in ensemble playing. Looking at your diagram on screen, you will see where the A note is established on each of the six strings. On the first string, it's on the fifth fret, and that's the same for the sixth string because both strings are tuned in E. On the second string, it's on the tenth fret, third string, the second fret, on the 4th string, it's a 7th fret. And on the 5th string, we will use the open string instead of the 12th fret. Let's investigate our fretboard and see where our notes are. So on the 1st string, it's on the 5th fret. On the 2nd string, the 10th fret. 3rd string, the 2nd fret. 4th string, 7th fret. On the 5th string, it's an open string. And on the 6th string, it's on the 5th fret. 
I'm going to tremolo over our A notes. And notice that I start soft, I get louder, and I get soft again. And I reach for my next A note. That's on the second string, third string, and so on and so forth. For the concept of subdivision, we will divide a crotchet into two parts, three parts, and four parts. That means you play a crotchet, quavers, triplets, and semi-quavers. And in context, it sounds like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And so on. The next technique is something called articulation. Articulation is something like ingredients which you add to your music to make it more interesting and more flavorful. We're going to look at two particular techniques. One is called staccato, where you shorten the duration of a note. And the next one is accents, where you play a note slightly louder with a stronger attack. Let's look at the staccato first. If I play this note normally, it sounds like this. And if I make it shorter, it will sound like this. And looking at my right hand, you will see that I strike a string and quickly mute it with another finger. So in quick succession, it looks like alternating my index and middle fingers. In our exercise, we're going to use triplets and make the middle note staccato. For example, one, two, three. The next aspect of articulation is called accents, and accents refer to playing a note slightly louder. For example, in these groups of three, once again, I've articulated the middle note. In this case, I've made it louder. The final technique which we're going to look at is something called speed burst. And as the name implies, this helps you to play your notes faster or play your scales much quicker with a quicker action with your right hand. This is how it sounds like. And in the count of four, it is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. The first technique we're going to look at is something called slurs or legados. And the two basic aspects of it are the hammer on, where you strike a string with your right hand and hammer on to the following string without playing the string again. In other words, if I do it slowly, watch my right hand as I hit it just once, and my left hand hammers on to the following string. So with this, you can have things like And I was doing a series of hammer-ons. The reverse of that is, of course, a pull-off, which is... And this time, I'm playing with my third finger and pulling off to my first finger. The hammer-on was from the first finger to the third finger. So for the hammer-on, you are ascending in pitch, while for the pull-offs, you are descending in pitch. And for a pull The next technique is called pizzicato, or more commonly in the popular guitar world as palm mute. And if you look at my right hand, I place my hand just close to the bridge and have slightly muted my strings to create such a sound. If I play it normally, it would sound as... And with the palm mute or pizzicato, and I'm only using my thumb to play the strings,
This creates a kind of comical effect. This technique is extremely useful if you want to create a drumming effect with your chords. It's called tambu. This is how it goes. I was using the length of my thumb to strike the string somewhere close to the bridge. But never hit the bridge, nor should you hit somewhere too close to the sound hole. Somewhere just above the bridge should be a good optimal place. And you should strike the strings and immediately bounce off. For example, this is good. The glissando technique, or also known as the slide, sounds like this. A very popular technique with flamenco enthusiasts is the rasquiado, which means strumming. With the classical guitarist, there are two main ways of doing it. You can use your thumb and strum across the sound hole in a curving manner or with your index finger. Another more common technique is to release your fingers in succession. For example, and you can close off with your thumb. Our final technique for this program is the harmonics, which creates a bell-like sound. And I was playing those notes on the 12th fret. For creating a harmonic, you should have three steps. First is to touch directly over a particular fret, in this case the 12th fret. Next is to play with your right hand. And finally, to release your left hand. So, in three steps, it's touch, play, and release. And in one succession, it goes like... And you'll have to do this with much practice. You will be able to play your harmonics. Harmonics sound good on the 12th fret, on the 7th fret, and on the 5th fret. Looking at the following slide, you will see different aspects of music reading. Letter A shows you fingering. You will see the numbers 1 and 3. 1, 3, and 1, 3 once again. These are fingerings referring to the left hand. Position 10, or in Roman numeral, as you see there's an X, tells you that your index finger should be on the 10th fret. And the little number 2 in a circle tells you that the note should be played on the 2nd string. For the excerpt letter B, it is a picture of a chord being played as an arpeggio. And the small letters which you see below, P, P, I, M, A, those naturally refer to the right hand and how you sustain those notes. Finally, in letter C, the staff shows you chord figurations and chord strumming patterns. For the first bar with the chord G, it is eight quavers, which means you will strum eight times in a count of four four. And the symbols above G, E minor seven, A minor seven, and D seven depict the various chords in the measures. There is a word pizz, P-I-Z-Z, -Z, below. That naturally refers to the technique pizzicato. And in English, it's written palm mute strumming. So you will have to execute these chords in a palm mute fashion. At this juncture,